Hello? Hello? Hi, Juan? Who is this? Hey, Juan, this is Sean. I'm a local realtor and I'm not looking to buy your home. I was actually hoping to tell you why I was calling. Is that fair? Okay. Yeah, so I was calling about the property over here. At... Do you still own that by chance? Yeah. Got it. Yeah, the reason why I'm calling is because obviously I'm sure you've heard the market is insane right now. Just curious to know if you would consider liquidating on that property if you could get a great offer. So why don't we, so just catch me up on, it's funny because you and I did, you were on my podcast, I don't know, what was it, a right. month ago or something? About a month ago, yeah. Yeah, so just catch me up, like real quick, just give me a highlight overview of the business, mm -hmm. what, what, what's working, uh, what's not working, what you're struggling with, what, is, what do things look like these days? So big brief high level overview is that I actually fell off track for the past couple of weeks with my mindset and everything, which mess up the prospecting and, you know, contacts, appointments, leads and all that good stuff. And so just recently, actually last today's Thursday, last Monday, um, I really took a deep dive with journaling to figure out, you know, why did I even start this in the first place and, and re tap into that. And doing that, I regained a lot of clarity. And so I'm now back on track with the prospecting. And so I've made a commitment to myself that I'm not going to let a single day go by where I don't make at least bare minimum 20 contacts per day. So I love it. Finally got back on track. So tell me about that, though, like through that self-discovery process, what conclusions did you draw from that? Like what came out of this little uh, exercise of like why you fell off and how you gained more clarity. Yeah, so a big thing is obviously knowing your why. Why are you doing this in the first place? Because we go through a tremendous amount of rejection and you know disappointments and, and failures. So why are you even doing this? And basically what can happen since I've learned multiple times over the past year that mindset is something that has to be continually renewed. It's not like you set it and forget it, you're good to go, no. You have to constantly make sure that you're working on your mindset and making sure you're on your top 100 game up here. Yeah. And so I really journaled it out. You know, why do I want to um, be one of the best agents in the country? Why do I want to get to this really high point? And it's, it's really interesting because in the beginning, I remember I wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning every single day, Monday through Friday or Sunday through Friday. And in the beginning, when I was about to take my licensing exam, I remember, you know, waking up before my 4 a.m. alarm clock because I was so fired up to get ready to, to get started in real estate. And I'm sitting in the kitchen, you know, making my drinks or, you know, pre-workout, whatever it was at like, you know, four in the morning and I'm feeling fired up. I'm imagining myself going on appointments, building this massive business. And then now it's like, shit, man, like things are like, it's difficult. It's a hard business. You encounter a lot of failures. And yep. so- the question I was asking myself was what happened to that other Sean that was fired up in the morning? Why am I having a hard time getting out of bed? And the difference was that back in the beginning, I was solely thinking of the vision, getting to this great point. I hadn't gone through a bunch of failures and, you know, experienced that, nor was I even thinking of perseverance. I was just thinking of the goal, right? Now, fast forward a year later, you've gone through a bunch of failures, lost appointments, lost listings, lost opportunities. And so if you're not careful and continually working on your mindset, those fairies can seep into you and really mess you up. And so I basically retapped into why I got into this to get to create a better lifestyle for myself and, you know, live a life that has limitless potential. And so once I retapped into that why, it actually re-sparked um, very similar feelings to, you know, a year ago back when I was waking up super early and I was like, this feels great. I'm finally back on track. And so... The, the morning after doing that whole little journaling session, I woke up at 3.30, 30 minutes before my alarm, and it was super easy. Like, it's, it's just super important to keep the why always in the rear view, you know, mirror and never lose sight of that. I mean, that's good. Let me shed some light on what I heard and maybe even get this picture in your mind even more clear. Okay. What you outlined was, um, I'm actually going to draw it for you. So... I talk a lot about the four levels of learning mm -hmm. that you probably went through in, in, the, in our mindset training, mm -hmm. but let me show you what, what occurs, right? So this will make a lot of sense. And I don't know if my camera is going to, oh yeah, well, okay. So you, you can see it, right? Yep. So, so this, this is, this was you, and this is anybody that starts anything new. Right. And this is, this is phase one, right? This is 
unconscious incompetence. This mm -hmm. is you only looking across like at the future you, which right. is causing like all this excitement. Like, dude, mm -hmm. this big business, this whatever that meant for you, whatever the why was, right. money, uh, uh, fame, fortune, recognition, whatever. And mm -hmm. you just saw across. Right. And then what happened is when you started, like when you went on the journey, you fall off this cliff into level two, which is right. conscious incompetence. In other words, deception. And mm -hmm. you start to second guess everything. What am I doing? I suck at this. Things aren't going well. You mm -hmm. lost the vision of the, that's why the excitement left you. Right. And here's what social psychologists found. You'll appreciate this. They found that people, when they visualize their goals like you do, often don't hit their goals because they get lost in the action, just like you did. And mm -hmm. so what they found was when you visualize, you must visualize yourself doing what is necessary right. to achieve the goal. And the people in the studies that when they visualize, they visualize, okay, Let's just say your why is X, Y, and Z, I, I, whatever it is. Let's just, for the sake of this conversation, let's just say for somebody it's money. Mm -hmm. Well, what people do is they visualize like, okay, it's going to be so cool having this type of income or this thing. What they should be doing, what the social psychologist found where was people needed to spend all of their energy visualizing on the person they must become. Mm -hmm. And the type of person and the action the type of person takes on a daily basis that earns that type of income. And those people, like it was, it was crazy to study like how much uh, that increased the likelihood of them achieving the goal. You with me on that? Yeah, so, absolutely. so I think this happens all the time in our business, you know, like realtor gets their license. Yay. They see all these successful realtors and like what they want to accomplish. And then they fall off the cliff and mm -hmm. they get into phase two, you know, which is like, I suck at this. I'm no good. This is very hard. Um, and I don't know if this is for me. And so what we have to do moving forward from a mindset perspective, I 100% agree, mm -hmm. is like constantly remind ourselves on what is the type of person right. that lives this life that I want. And I have to constantly behave and act like that person. In other words, becoming the person today mm -hmm. so that I can have what I want in the future. Like that's the key, key, key thing. Um, and it's not the other way around, you know? Mm -hmm. So getting lost in the activities and the actions. Yeah. And I mean, it's so funny that you mentioned, you know, visualizing yourself doing those activities to get to the person that you want to become. Because once I outlined the vision, I was journaling on a piece of printer paper. What I actually thought was, okay, the end vision, end goal is becoming the billion dollar broker, right? Making appointments, taking these listings, doing these activities, that's the activity that's going to get me to that point. That's and right. So for the very first time, I've, I've actually never done it before. For the very first time, I made the connection between the activity of doing this prospecting work and the actual end vision, which it changed everything once I did that. That's right. You nailed it. And, and so that's just a key. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. You've gone through that on your own from a self um, discovery standpoint, like being so self-aware. So that's really, really cool. I appreciate you saying that. I mean, it's, it's really good. I mean, everybody has to go through it and uh, it's just a part of self-development. All exactly. right, so, so getting back into your business. So 20 contacts a day, who, who are you calling to reach that goal on a daily basis? I just recently added expireds and cancels. So I've already gone through them this morning. Currently I'm at seven contacts for the day so far. So expireds, canceled, FISBOs, absentees, and if I have any time, circle prospecting. Awesome. Pure, perfect. All right. So you had seven this morning. Mm -hmm. Did you, you started at 8 a.m. and then you went till nine and that was, did you dial for an hour or 45 minutes or 30 minutes? Started at 8, 16. So I'm getting better on working that back to eight. Okay, cool. So, so yeah. you did an hour and you got seven contacts, which is a little bit lower, but it was expires and cancels you called first, right? Yes. And I got yeah. one lead. The one lead was a FISBO. Yeah, cool. All yeah. right, cool. So what what source of business do you want to get in on this session with me? Uh, I want to do absentee hours. Yeah, perfect. That's I was hoping you were going to say that. All <laughs> right, so do you have your leads loaded up into Vulcan 7 ready to go? I do. I have it on Mojo. 
All right, beautiful. Let's uh, let's get into some dials and just do your normal thing, right? So mm -hmm. if it's dying, dialing, I just want to observe Sean Allison in the flesh, like what actually is happening. So do right. your thing and I'm a fly in the wall. Awesome. Sounds good. I've got the man, the myth, the legend watching me. So no pressure, right? <laughs> well, here's what we also know, right? Is like, because you're being watched, it's going to force you to stay in the pocket. It's going to force you to do things that you right, wouldn't yeah. otherwise do. So this is going to help you really reach on these calls because, yeah. right? So let's have some fun with this. All right, let's do it. Switch my number for this session. Yep. How many numbers are you circling through? I've got one, four numbers. Yeah, cool. And you switch them every day? Uh, every hour or so. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. even better. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if every day is too long to, you know, have it show up as spam. So I do. It Where are you getting your numbers from? Uh, burner app. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So this is, I, I don't think I've ever used this one before, so it'll be fun. Perfect. Absentees, four rings, call the script. All right, let's do it. Hello. Hi, Jonas. Yes. Hey, Jonas, this is Sean. I'm a realtor and I'm not looking to buy your home. I was actually hoping to tell you why I was calling. Is that fair? You say you're a realtor and you're looking for... Yeah, I was, I was uh, calling about the property over here. Do you still own that by chance? No. Oh, you don't own the property yet? Uh, I'm rent right now, but I don't have property. Oh, gosh. All right. Yeah. I was just curious to know if you had any property you were interested in potentially selling or any that you wanted to pick up with the market being so hot. Maybe later I'm going to try to, if I could try to find any house to, to buy, but I know, I know sure by now. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. I totally respect that. I mean, just out of curiosity, what makes you interested in potentially purchasing? Maybe, maybe later. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Well, hey, let's pretend it's in the oh, he hung up. I mean, cool. so is it still dialing? Oh, no, the lead just hung up. All I right, have so to click on contact to go to the next. All right. So pause for just a second. So, sure. I mean, that that conversation and that contact was was pretty much textbook. I mean, that oh, was really yeah. good. Like your tonality, your delivery, your confidence, like <laughs> all of it was really good. Um, you, you, you come out and say, I'm not interested in buying your house because a lot of people are like, mm -hmm. because a lot of wholesalers are calling, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So I was doing these with a bunch of our other uh, students in, 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 in our group yesterday. And mm -hmm. so do you always lead with that or you lead with the property address first? Um, if the name is right, I always lead with that. If it's, if there's no... If I don't know, like if I say hi name or it's a male name, it's a female sounding voice, whatever, um, I'll say, hey, I'm calling about this property. Is this the owner? And then once I get a, a confirmation for that, I'll say, yeah, I'm a realtor, not looking to buy, hoping to tell you why I called. All right, cool. Okay. Um, okay, that's fine. Let, let's, mm -hmm. so let's do some more dials, but you need to be dropping voicemails when you call leads like absentee owners mm -hmm. that are so widespread because you're making so many dials on Mojo, we have to at least monetize. And so I'm okay not leaving a voicemail with, um, with expires and for sale by owners because they're more targeted and hopefully you're, you're contacting them more than once per day. Yeah. But are you scraping through your absentee owners and then like just one time and then scrape, 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 like a new list, a new list, a new, like, you, you know uh, what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm trying to say, okay, because this, this is what I keep seeing over and over again is we're calling this list one time and no voicemails are being left. And there's some other things I'm gonna have you do too. But after this session, where does this list go? Do we call through it again? Like what occurs with that list or do we just call new, new people? Yeah, so lately I've been calling new people. Um, I, this is 22192. I previously dialed through 22193. Mm -hmm. Then I bought the new list from the show. I mean, this is my first time dialing through this one. All right, keep going. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through some stuff that we're gonna do. Sure. Please leave your message for. Hey, Mike. This is Sean. I'm a local realtor. And I was calling about the property over here. At... 
I'm just curious to know if you would consider liquidating on that property if you could get a great offer for it. And you know, if you have any interest in cashing in since the market's so hot, I'd be happy to do a quick pricing analysis for you. And if the numbers make sense, we can discuss what that process would look like. Either way, no big deal. Hope to talk to you soon. Thanks. All right. So we're going to change the voicemail. The voicemail needs, needs to be Sean. This is a realtor. I'm calling about the property. Give the address. I need you to call me back as soon as you get this. I got a okay. quick question for you. That's yeah. it. It's got to pique their curiosity to get them to call you back. Okay. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice. Hi, this is Caroline. Oh, I'm sorry. I might have the wrong number. I was calling about a property over here. And is this the owner? Yes, it is. Hey there, this is Sean. I'm a local realtor and I'm not, Hi, not looking to buy your home. I was actually hoping to tell you why I was calling. Is that fair? Okay, you're calling to say what? Yeah, I was calling about the property at Kempston Lane and just curious to know, Caroline, obviously I'm sure you've heard the market is insane right now. Just curious to know if you would consider liquidating on that property if you could get a great offer. Oh, no, not interested. Nope. Got it. Totally respect that, Carol. Well, hey, I appreciate your time. And is that like a forever thing for you? Or do you think you'd be open at some point in the future? Uh, we just bought it, uh, I guess, in 2016. And um, so we got it for a good price. So really not interested in, in selling it for, for a while. Got it. Got it. And so really, my last question for you, Carol, before I let you go, is that you know, let's pretend it's at some point in the future and, you know, potentially you may be interested in selling it. Do you think it makes any sense for us to stay in touch? Uh, no, no. Got it. Well, hey, I appreciate your time and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Hung up. All right. Cool. Dude, listen, good, good call. Like the framework is dialed in. Mm -hmm. um, I would bring some some more enthusiasm into the call. All right. I had a feeling you were going to say that. Yep. It's okay. You yeah. have great, the framework is like dialed in nicely. Um, I would have asked just one piece of motivation, right? So like she bought it in 2016, do you guys have it rented or, you know, like you got to be mm -hmm. a little bit more inviting. So when I say enthusiastic, what I mean by that is like a little bit more inviting to, to, break the ice there's still a little bit of tension on the call from you mm -hmm. probably feeling uncomfortable and from the person yeah so yeah we really have to like that was a great great contact great conversation and right. i love that you didn't force anything so you i can tell you've really learned not to force leads yes so many people would have just forced that right into the database well i'll just stay in right. touch and they have probably been like okay um so i would have said to after i she bought in 2016 so is this a rental property? Okay, cool. Then I would have also said, are you guys looking to add additional properties? Mm, if right. I run across a great deal, would you be offended if I let you know about it? So okay. that's, that's an opening phrase into a potential opportunity to get into the database. Okay, I gotcha. So, so we could have prolonged the conversation a little bit to break mm -hmm. some ice to see if there's a relationship there to be had. Right. You are very matter of fact, right to the point. I like it, but if we add in a little bit of um, digging a little bit deeper, asking a little bit more questions while being enthusiastic and being more inviting so the person wants to open up and have a fun conversation, mm -hmm. um, I, think, I think that would have been a lot better. No, that's great feedback. You know so, what I'm saying? Does that make sense what I'm saying though? Like it specifically? Does. It does. I love that line. So, you know, if I come across a, you know, uh, I think, did you say opportunity or property? I always say great deal. Like, so great if deal. I find out that if it's, if they have that uh, rental, right. So I'd say, all right, cool. You're not, I get it. You're going to hold this thing for a long time. If I run across something, that's a great deal. Would you be offended if I, if I brought it to your attention? Right. Got it. If I come across something, that's a great deal. Would you be offended if I were to bring that to your attention? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Or I, or I let you know about it, or is it something that you guys, are you guys, because the next question would be, are you looking to get more properties? Like if, mm -hmm. if something was a great deal, would you guys be open to getting more? This is for the absentee owner who says, no, we're not looking to sell. Okay, cool. Are they mm -hmm. looking to acquire? Right. right? So that gets you into the, in, in the door from a relationship standpoint to see if it's a potential lead to go into the database or not. Okay. So basically before going into the acquiring route, I typically like to say, and I don't think I said it on this call. Uh, but I typically like to say, you know, would you be open to selling at some point in the future? 
I can't remember if I asked that or not. You did. You did. I did? Okay. So yeah. ask that and then lead into acquiring or would you go straight to acquiring? No, no. I like the way you did it, right? So yeah. sometime in the future, they say no, and we're going to hang on to it for, for a while. Then I get into acquiring. Got it. Okay, great. Cool. Sweet. Thank you. No problem. This is the best kind of training we can get, right? Yeah. And Live then, action. Yeah, dude. Let's let's get a couple more contacts because I want to, I just want you to like enjoy this more. Like, because, right. you know, like. Automatic voice message system. Hello? hello. Hi there. I'm. Hello? Hi there. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Yes. Yeah, so I was calling about the property over here at. Is this the owner? Yes. Hey there, this is Sean. I'm a local realtor and I'm not looking to buy your home. I was actually hoping to tell you why I was calling. Is that fair? Okay, why are you calling? Yeah, the reason why I was calling is because obviously I'm sure you've heard the market is just insane right now. Just curious to know if you would consider liquidating on that property if you could get a great offer. Oh, uh, listen, listen. Uh, it is property already sold out. Oh, it's already sold? Oh, congratulations. How recent was that? Yep. No worries. Better. Let's keep moving on. Much better. Much better. Cool. Much. It's hard. Better. It's hard when there's a language barrier. You know, it's difficult. Oh yes, yeah, that's true too. Yeah. So, I I just like all right. Just next, next. You know. Okay. No, I consciously was. I don't know if you saw it smiling as I was talking. That really does help. Like, oh, it's, it's huge. Just, you're standing, and when you smile, you can't help but be more enthusiastic. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like even my mindset around doing it, it became more enjoyable. Hello? Exactly. Yeah. Please so leave just, your message for two, four. Yeah, it became more enjoyable. I was like, this feels great. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And the other thing is keep telling yourself you're only looking for one great conversation per Hello? hour. Per hour. Hello? Hi, Michael. Hello. Hi, Michael. Can you hear me? At the tone, please record your message. When you finish, oh, that was his voice. Or press one for more options. I had muted my phone so that I could talk. I forgot oh, to take it off mute, which I do sometimes. Yeah. But then it sounded like a voice. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I did. yeah. I hate it when I get voice ones that sound like actual people talking. It's the worst. Yeah. It's like, come on, bro. Hello. Hi there. I'm calling about a property over here. Is this the owner? Uh, no, it is not. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't have any connection to. No. Got it. I definitely have the wrong number. Sorry about that. Okay. Bye. All right. Now I'm going. And so you don't count that as a contact, correct? Uh, no, it's not the right person. All right. Good. It's got to be the right person to be a contact. That's right. I don't even consider calling the person's daughter or son by accident. I don't even consider that a contact. It's still not them. Yeah, exactly. You know? I'm going to put myself on mute for one second. Sure. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, yeah. How are you? Hi there, I'm doing well. I was calling about a property over here. At is this the owner? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, this is Sean. I'm a local realtor and I'm not looking to buy your home. I was actually hoping to tell you why I was calling. Is that fair? Please, I'm, a, I'm a in other states. Okay, the house is not for sale. Thank you. Oh, understood. I, oh, he hung up. All right, so did you hang up? Yeah, it's hung up. All right, so your, your pace has to increase as well oh. so when you're listening because your pace is always the same mm -hmm. so your pace has to speed up when you sense some hesitation or the resistance from the prospect you got to speed up the pace like mm -hmm. hey before i let you go let me just real quick like that type of thing and like get quicker to the point right so he's like it's okay. not for sale he's like i would have so you got to say you got to be quick right so all right perfect that's what i was hoping you were going to say right just Ooh. like that to the guy okay so that's yeah. why listening is so key. I'm really trying to pick up on the prospect, what they're saying. It's mm -hmm. not for sale. Like he's very matter of fact. All right, perfect. I was hoping you were going to say that. So here's my, here's my only question. I'll let you go. I promise. Right. Just like that. This is a lot more engaging with somebody. You, right. You got to capture their attention, you know? Okay. And okay. so, uh, cool. Let me just tell you this real quick. Right now mm -hmm. I got gotcha, you, you know? Right. Right. I actually yeah. thought you were going to say to slow down the pace. I thought you were going to say I was talking too fast. I, I wasn't expecting that. Well, yeah, no, not at all. So keep rolling. Cool. Hello. Hi there. I'm calling about the property over here. At Is this the owner? 
I don't have any properties on that. Oh, you, you don't by chance happen to own? Gotcha. Definitely have the wrong number. Oh, hung up. Cool. It's always so funny when we try to act nice. All right, sorry about that. Then just hang up. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Hello? Hello? Hi, Juan? Who is this? Hey, Juan, this is Sean. I'm a local realtor and I'm not looking to buy your home. I was actually hoping to tell you why I was calling. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah, so I was calling about the property over here. At... Do you still own that by chance? Yeah. Got it. Yeah, the reason why I'm calling is because obviously I'm sure you've heard the market is insane right now. Just curious to know if you would consider liquidating on that property if you could get a great offer. Yeah, the thing, the, the thing with you guys is basically you will not give me market price, right? So the, the home is in a great condition. I already currently have a tenant. Mm -hmm. um, I could basically, uh, uh, you know, you know, basically liquidate the lease sometime on April or May if I wanted to, right? That's when I renew yeah. the lease. So basically, again, great condition, the home. So why will I basically sell it to you uh, instead of going through through standard market? Well, that's exactly why I'm calling Juan. I I'm not I'm not actually an investor looking to purchase your property. I'm just a realtor. And so if we were to work together, I would bring you an offer for at least fair market value, if not more. Is that something that you were potentially considering? Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? So yeah, I can hear you now. So yes. What were you saying? Yeah, I was saying that we're completely on the same page. I'm not an investor looking to actually purchase your property. I'm just a realtor. And so if we were to work together, I would bring you an offer for at least fair market value, if not more. And is that something that you are potentially interested in doing? Yeah, I'm potentially interested in doing that. Um, uh, along with that, basically, I will not <laughs> Sell it, but also if I sell that property, I will I will be looking to buy potentially uh, maybe 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 like two town homes. I'm sorry. So I it right now, I currently live in Haymarket, Virginia. Right. Mm -hmm. So I used to live in Woodbridge. I moved to Haymarket, right? Yeah. And uh, it's 40 minutes away, right? So it's hard to manage, right? I would like to get something closer where I live in order to continue having my rentals because rentals are good for my taxes. But right, yeah. understood. Got it. So basically it sounds like you would ideally so, like to get a, so, go ahead. I'll be open, right? Uh, if, you, if you're coming with a, with, a, with a good market, with a fair market value, I'm, I'm open, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Well, you're one. Real, right? Different. You're, Sorry, you broke up a little bit. No, you are a real. That's different. You're a realtor. So. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm a realtor. And so, what I'd like to do for you, Juan, and I really don't mind, is I can simply just do a, pr a quick pricing analysis on the property. I can email you the results, and if the numbers make sense, then we can potentially discuss, you know, what working together would look like. Does that sound fair? Yes. I mean, so you're a realtor. So what? What? Are, what is your percentage? Are you, do you do three percent? What do you do for, for commission? Uh, that's a great question. I do offer a flexible commission program. And that's one of the first things that we'll discuss when we actually do to get together. Now, to make sure that I'm doing the pricing analysis correctly, since I haven't actually seen the property in person, can you tell me about any major updates you've made to it that would impact the value? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I actually, well, I'm currently not at home. I'm actually in a business trip. I'm, I'm in France right now. Oh, okay. So, but basically, I did a refinance last. I, I I did a refinance last year. Yeah. On this property, so I have uh, uh I have basically uh, what is it? Uh, uh an appraisal done, right? Mm -hmm. so right. I can potentially forward that to you, but I can basically tell you that there is hardwood floors, uh, uh basically on the first two levels, uh, near kitchen, near appliances. Uh, new, new master bathroom, what else? New AC unit. Mm -hmm. uh, also, what I did is uh, I, I, I installed uh, an actual, um, uh, what is it? I, 
I I built a, a special system on the basement so that they, the basement doesn't get flooded. Right. right? Um, it is is on top of the is on top of your standard sump pump. This is okay. the stuff that I put, and that cost me like twenty thousand dollars back back about four maybe 14 years ago just to give an idea right it was it was, it was quite expensive but i did that uh at my neighbor's house you know my neighbor's house i you know had you know higher you know had water damage every now and then i sure. had it one time and after that and after i installed the system never had any of that stuff before mm -hmm. what else just, just to give an idea you know change the windows on the front part of the house right all the windows so they're brand new windows uh yeah i guess that's about, I mean, I guess, you know, everything else was pretty standard, right? Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Well, I appreciate all the information, Juan. I'll go ahead and get to work on the pricing analysis. And what's the best email for you typically so I can go ahead and send that over to you? Last name at AOL.com. I'm sorry? My last name at AOL.com. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so we're talking... All right. Wonderful. I'll go okay, ahead. And... Which company do you represent? Yes, sir. I'm with Keller Williams. Which company do you work? Oh, Keller Williams. I think I'll yes. send you my email. Again. I'll send you yes. my send email. Over, you know, see what's up. You know, I mean, again, we in this pricing analysis are pretty straightforward, right? We get you can go to Stilo and stuff like that. It gives you basically an idea, right? Yeah. So I'm assuming this is around the same. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and look at the past comparable right. homes to get an idea for what it's worth. And we can go ahead and schedule a quick little, we can do a video call to go over the, the numbers. What times typically work best for you? I have some time tomorrow at 4 p.m. or 6 p.m. Which one would be better for you? I'm, I'm traveling back to, 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 to the States tomorrow. So tomorrow is not a good time. It will work, but it has to be next week. Got it, got it. So how does Monday sound next week for a quick little video call? Yeah, let me see what my schedule like Monday. What mm -hmm. time on Monday? Yeah, we could do any time between 4 and 6 p.m., whichever one is better for you. I can probably do 4.30. Wonderful. Okay, I'll go, I'll go ahead and get you tentatively penciled in for this upcoming Monday at 4.30. And if I don't hear from you at 4.30, yeah. what should I do? Uh, you could, it's probably better to call me on this number. Right? Got right it. There. Call me on this number. Awesome. Sounds good. So let me go ahead and get to work on my end one to get all my resources for you, and we'll be in touch very soon. Sounds good, man. Take care. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> Boom. That was good. <laughs> all right. Pause that. Pause everything. We got to talk. Everything gone. So this is what we do, right? So like, this is yeah. what I'm talking about. When you're calling absentee owners, like you can get so many of these, but I, I mean, I'm so happy. So like air high five. Yes. But like the other thing is you, you have such an opportunity to like even get better because right. you're still very passive. Like that's why I was putting in the chat. I'm like, all right, let's do this. All right, Juan, let's, you got to okay. take control. Right. right. You got to start leading them down the path. And so you got to be more confident with conviction of like, here are the next steps. Right. So Juan, here's what, here's what we're going to do. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to do the pricing analysis. All right. Mm -hmm. You and I will touch base on Monday. I'll walk yep. you through what the pricing look like. Cause obviously my job Juan, is to bring you the most money, right? That's what you want for the property. You see, I'm talking with much more conviction. Like that's what that guy wants. Yeah, and you're, you're, you are very timid. Like, all yeah. right, well, maybe we can maybe bring you market value. Like, fuck that. Are you serious? Like, dude, I will fight tooth and nail, Juan, to make sure that if the day comes in April or May, that if it makes sense, we'll get this on the market and we'll fight to get this thing sold for the top dollar. And then we'll look at getting you something closer to where you live. Like, that's a lot more assumptive. You right. got to bring right. that to these calls. When you generate the opportunity, you yeah. got to be assumptive. You know what I mean? Like, these are the next steps. Cool. Cool. All right. Awesome. That's what people want. People want to be led. So that's why I'm like, oh my God, this is a great opportunity. Don't blow it. This is so good. So anyway, <laughs> you, you didn't, you got it. You got the lead. You schedule an appointment. Um, the thing with what you tried to do at the end there, like if I don't hear from you, it wasn't clear. 
So like, so here's what I would have liked oh, you to yeah. say. Like, what do you, what? Cause it was a little out of context. He's like, just call me. How it should go is, all right, so Juan, here's what I'm gonna do next. All right, so your big opportunity is assumptive statements. So Juan, here's what I'm gonna do next. When I hang up, I'm going to email you my resume. So you have it on file. You've got all my contact information. I'm also going to send you a calendar invitation with my Zoom link for Monday at 4.30. Okay. We'll plan on being on that call for probably 20 or 30 minutes. I'm going to break down the full pricing analysis. I'll walk you through how my flexible commission program works. And then at the end of that, we can talk about potentially working together in the future when the day comes, when that lease is up. All that sound fair? Now it's nice, solid, firm what the expectations are. And, right. and you can impress Juan. Like, okay, yeah, this guy's a real professional. Right. It, you were close, you know, but like, it close, was, yeah. but it was a great, great opportunity. And so there you go. Like every hour you should get one of those and start to think about that moving forward. Like at the end of a hundred conversations in a week, you should have 10 of those bad boys lined up for next week. Right. You see the funnel start coming together, right? Right. So- you can absolutely do that. Your framework is good. You know what to say. I think now you got to start working on how you say what you say. That's number one. And then number two, big opportunity for you. You got to start bringing some more assumptive statements to these calls. Okay. Here's what we're going to do next. Here's what I'd like to do next. Here are the next steps. Bob, let's do this. These are all assumptive statements right out of the script book that you got to bring to your game, right? So when you have an opportunity, because if you're too timid, you know, you're going to get, you're going to lose them. You're going to lose them. Agreed. Yeah. Does that all make sense? It does. It does. And quick question. Um, the reason why I was like, potentially we can discuss, I was trying to put it into hypotheticals to take that. Absolutely. Question. Did I do that? Th that well, part was fine. That part was fine. Um, but the, and you only use potential when there's resistance. He had no resistance. Oh, He's like, I don't want to give this thing away. I want to sell this for retail. And you're like, I'm just a realtor. Like, what was that? Like, yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what I'm calling. I'm not a wholesaler. I, I'm a real estate agent. My job is to get your house uh, sold for with as many offers for as much as possible at market value or more, which is exactly, Juan, what you want. Am I right? Well, yeah, that's right, Sean. Cool. Let's do this. Right, go. Pause real quick. Um, were you say, so? I'm just a realtor. Was that good or bad? I mean, I didn't like that. Like you were almost okay. like downplaying yourself. Like he didn't really bad. get it. He even okay. brought it back up again. Like he didn't really get it. Like what you were doing or what the call yeah. was about. It wasn't clear. It wasn't like you need more conviction. You know, this is that whole enthusiasm. You're just so monotone. Like I'm just a realtor, and yeah. if we end up working together you know, potentially I can bring you market value. Like that's not what that guy wants to hear. Even I feel bored listening to you say that right now. <laughs> well, you know, anyway, I think there's just some excitement. You found somebody, right. the job that you, that, that is at hand is to make a lot of dials to find somebody that wants to sell. We found that person. Okay, cool. Now it's game time, right? Now it's game time. I need to lead this person. I need to get them motivated. They all want them to be enthusiastic about meeting with me. Uh, I want them to be excited to meet with me. So that's what you have to bring to these conversations so that Sean Allison becomes this character in their, in their mind that they want to engage with, you know? Got it. So definitely more enthusiasm, conviction, less not smile when I'm talking. Yeah. And I'm just a realtor. I thought it was good because it's like a power interrupt, but it was good, but it was lacking the conviction and the enthusiasm. Yeah, that's all. That's all because he didn't, he almost like you weren't compelling enough that you weren't the investor. He didn't want to be the investor and you weren't. So it's like, God, this is exactly, this is so perfect for me. I'm a realtor. I'm not an investor, but you were like, that was that little part. I'm splitting hairs, but that little part, it was almost like that was your time to shine. And like, you, sh you, you kind of backtracked a little bit. He was hoping you were a realtor. Right. You know I what I'm saying? Quite, I didn't quite pick that up initially. I know. Time. But now it's like, okay, I get it now. Because the first thing he said was, my lease is up in April or May. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping to put this on the open market. Why wouldn't I just put this on the open market? Meaning list it with a realtor. Like, 
it was almost like the call was so good. Like it was, you couldn't get any better than that. Yeah. Yeah. It was an objection. It was an objection to being a wholesaler. Wait a minute. Wrong person to give the objection to. Correct. 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 Got it. Got it. So dude, that was, that was awesome. Um, so I would be emailing him your resume. Okay. I'd be sending him a calendar invitation with your zoom link with a nice email. Hey Juan, great talking with you. Uh, here, I would outline clearly the next steps in the email, at least, right? right. Here's okay. what you can expect on Monday, right? Bullet point it. One, I'm going to walk you through the pricing analysis. Two, I'll walk you through uh, how I do business, including my flexible commission. And then three, if it makes sense, we can talk about potentially uh, getting together in the spring and looking at opportunities to get this thing on the market. Cool? Right. And so I'll, there's, I also, Juan, sent you a calendar invitation. We'll talk more Monday at 4.30. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So there you go, man. I'm, I'm really glad. And uh, I feel very fortunate that we got something like that on camera because we don't know what's going to happen. So that was fun. That was great. That was great, man. That was great. I I, I almost, let's make sure, like, we almost, I almost forgot this. Like, let's make sure mm -hmm. that you, the Zoom call with Juan Monday at 4.30, you record it on Zoom so we can look at it. Oh, but the, the, wouldn't the prospect know that it's being recorded? Yeah, absolutely. And that's okay. Oh, okay. I wasn't expecting you to say that. Well, yeah, it's normal. I mean, like you look at any Zoom call you do with any company, most of them are on a Zoom automatic recording. Oh. Like, have you done any, like, like if you talk to any companies about anything right now, like, and you set up a Zoom consultation, mm -hmm. like all, they're all recorded. And you could, you could tell them like, hey, I'm just, uh, I'm just going to record this for quality assurance purposes. Are you okay with that? He's like, yeah, sure. Okay. Right. That Every company out there is, these are like the new phone calls, you know, like yeah. Zoom recordings. Got so it. you can make sure he's okay with it, you know? Um, but I love to hear that conversation and how you do on that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, dude. Just, when, just when I don't think that the coaching can get better, it gets better with live training. So it's <laughs> Well, that's great, man. Well, good luck on that. Uh, keep going. Don't even touch that lead yet. Get oh. your 20, get your 20 contacts and then come back, clean that up, get your email out, get your resume sent out. And then dude, that's a great start to the day. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Brandon. All right, brother. Talk to you soon. See you soon.